Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridium perfringens, the diseases caused by C. perfringens, including the food poisoning, as well as the myonecrosis and gas gangrene. With that said, now let's talk about the diagnosis and treatment of Clostridium perfringens. For maximum understanding and retention, please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Clostridium perfringens is a gram-positive bacillus. Is it spore-forming? Yes, although rarely. Aerobic or anaerobic? It's anaerobic. Motile or immotile? Immotile. Diseases include gas gangrene and food poisoning. Can they make spores? Yes, they can. Some gram-positive bacteria make spores, but gram-negatives never make spores. What's a spore? Structure-wise, calcium dipiclonic acid and others. Function-wise is to protect the bacteria from unfavorable conditions. What's the classic definition of Clostridia? Gram-positive, strictly anaerobic organism. Can they make spores? Yes. Can they reduce sulfate to sulfite? No. Why do we fear Clostridia? Because they are everywhere around us. Because they can make spores, they can produce toxins, and they can grow in anaerobic conditions. Please pause and review. Clostridium perfringens is everywhere around you. It can colonize you. It's a gram-positive rectangular rod, can make spores, although rarely anaerobic, non-motile, rapidly growing, and beta-hemolytic. This is important for diagnosis. How many types do we have? We have many subtypes, A, B, C, D, and E types of Clostridium perfringens. How many toxins? A lot of them, including the famous alpha toxin, which is an alpha lecithinase or phospholipase. We have have beta toxin necrotizing enterocolitis we have the epsilon toxin and we have the iota toxin moreover we still have the enterotoxin which causes fluid loss how come it alters membrane permeability oh and this will be the mechanism of diarrhea in case of clostridium difficile which we'll talk about later this enterotoxin is boosted by your trypsin. It's also a super antigen which can activate T lymphocytes. What are the diseases caused by Clostridium perfringens? We have soft tissue infections including cellulitis, fasciitis, myositis, myonecrosis, and gas in green gas in your soft tissue as we have discussed before. Moreover, there is shock and acute kidney failure. This is a rapidly fatal condition. By the way, if your patient has myonecrosis and gas in green, please do not wait for stupid labs. You need to start treatment immediately. Later, you can take a look at the lab results. But now you need to help your patient first. Rule number one, do no harm. Hey, medicosis, are soft tissue infections the only infections caused by Clostridium perfringens? No, watery diarrhea can also happen. Classic food poisoning. It's a heat labile enterotoxin. The incubation period is 8 to 24 hours. No fever, no nausea, no vomiting. Just crampy diarrhea. What did I eat to get all of this? Beef, chicken, turkey, ham, gravy. Especially if the pork is undercooked. Especially if it's combined with sweet potatoes. There is another severe form of GI disease that can happen because of C. perfringens, and this is known as necrotizing enteritis, caused by type C, Clostridium perfringens. And we have talked about this before. Please pause and review. Don't forget, this one is a bloody diarrhea, unlike the previous one, which is a watery diarrhea. Now to today's topic, diagnosis and treatment of Clostridium perfringens. Diagnosis, microscopy, it's a gram-positive rectangular rod. You will see the bacteria without leukocytes. This is important. Can I culture it? Yeah, it's easy. It's an anaerobic, so we use anaerobic media. They are rapidly growing organisms on the culture, and they are beta-hemolytic on blood agar. Can I detect? Yes, you can detect the toxin in stool sample since they colonize your gut. How can I manage it? Well, it depends on the disease. If it's myonecrosis slash gas gangrene, you need surgical debridement. There is no question about it. 
high dose penicillin helps. Hyperbaric oxygen chamber might help. The results are inconclusive. Some doctors recommend it, others do not. The anti serum against alpha toxin was a great hypothesis in the past, but nowadays it's rarely used. It's not particularly effective. Now, if the disease is food poisoning, that's a totally different story. Unlike here, where you have to go all in with surgical debridement and high dose penicillin, here you do almost nothing. It's a self limiting disease. Just provide supportive care for your patient until the gut flora re-establishes itself spontaneously. Let's review Clostridium perfringens from Picmonic. Clostridium, here's the classroom. Perfringens, here is perfume. It's gram-positive, here is my angel. Bacillus, here is the rod. Anaerobe, ant in a robe. Spore-forming, look at these spores. Alpha-toxin is a lecithinase or phospholipase that breaks down your phospholipid bilayer cell membrane. Also, we have a heat labile enterotoxin. Diseases include myonecrosis with gas gangrene as well as watery diarrhea and food poisoning. Management of the myonecrosis and gas gangrene include surgical debridement, high-dose penicillin, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. In contrast, the management of the watery diarrhea is supportive care because it's self-limiting. If you want to learn more about penicillin and the other antibiotics and antivirals, antifungals, antiparasitic medications, etc., check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectsnetis.com. I also have a surgery course and an emergency medicine course, among other courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.